be the vampire slayer. Look, I don't want to get you in any more trouble. And I don't want to get you dead. Willow and Tara's first on-screen kiss was touching, overdue, and even important. Yet Buffy and Angel will always be this show's ultimate power couple. What'd you do all day? I, I read a little and just thought about a lot of things. For the first several episodes, Angel is an enigma. Although it seems like he genuinely wants to aid the Slayer, there's certainly something menacing lurking inside him. I did a lot of thinking today. I really can't be around you. Because when I am... Hey, no big water when over am, the bridge, under the bridge, over the dam. badly I want to kiss, kiss you. Kiss me? Buffy finally gets a glimpse of Angel's dark side after they first lock lips. Pushed away, Buffy finds that the mysterious stranger she's fallen for is also one of the monsters she's been hunting which is only the beginning of their complicated relationship. What? What's here with you? The closer Angel gets to Buffy, the closer he gets to true happiness. But the closer Angel gets to happiness, the more soulless he becomes. Buffy, what happened? Nothing. Number 9. Cory and Topanga, Boy Meets World It was kind of cool staring down an angry mob. The fourth episode of Boy Meets World not only marks Cory and Topanga's first smooch, but also Topanga's first appearance on the show. Cory, I got Jedediah to drive me to your house after school. Who's Jedediah? My father. Paired together by Mr. Feeney for a school project, Cory is reluctant to work with the weirdo girl. The two eventually come together in an act of protest, however, handcuffing themselves to their lockers. Things could get ugly. Matters take an uncomfortable turn when Topanga suggests they kiss. With nowhere to run, Cory is pressed up against the locker and his future wife lays one on him. Uh, <laughs> Afterwards, the stunned Cory isn't sure whether to be ecstatic or horrified. His bad hair day only makes the beginning of their romance more memorable. It was my first one, too. <laughs> <laughs> Number 8. Curtin Blaine. Glee. What's that? I'm decorating Pavarotti's casket. Glee had no shortage of great first kisses, from Finn and Rachel to Brittany and Santana. Yet nothing tugged at her heartstrings quite like the first time Kurt and Blaine embraced each other. Do tell. Bullied and ridiculed for being gay, Kurt finds confidence in himself upon switching schools and meeting Blaine. Kurt, there is a moment when you say to yourself, oh, there you are. I've been looking for you forever. Although he initially only views Kurt as a friend, Blaine comes to realize that love has been staring him in the face this whole time. You move me, Kurt. And this duet would just be an excuse to spend more time with you. Delivering a heartfelt speech about how Kurt inspires him, Blaine leans in for a passionate smooch. From that point on, their romance soars like a blackbird. All your life, you were only waiting for this moment to arrive. Number 7. Eric and Sookie. True Blood. What did you mean you're not going to be around much longer? Don't pretend you care about me. Sookie and Bill might have been the main couple on True Blood, but let's be honest, we all really wanted to see Sookie end up with Eric. Deep down, you know you shouldn't trust him. Okay. Tell me why. This is the makeout sessions fans had been dying to see for almost three seasons. With Russell Edgington running amok, Eric accepts that he might face the true death, but refuses to leave this world without kissing everyone's favorite fairy. If I meet the true death without having at least kissed you, Suki Stackhouse, that would be my biggest regret. Suki attempts to resist Eric, although she can't help but be sucked in by his bad boy charms. While she pulls back before things can get naughty, the blonde vampire awaits Suki in her sex dreams. Okay, I get it. I'm irresistible and intoxicated. Number 6. Jack and Kate. Lost. I'm sorry. Between its three central characters, Lost gave us one of TV's best love triangles ever. Whether you're rooting for Team Jack or Team Sawyer, most people would agree that Kate's first kiss with the doc packed a more dramatic punch. I'm sorry that I am not as perfect as you. Emotions run high on the island as Kate's past begins to catch up to her present. In a moment of vulnerability, she turns to Jack for comfort and they partake in a steamy kiss. Jack is caught off guard, and Kate seems just as surprised by her own actions. Unsure what to make of this, she rushes deeper into the jungle. As fast as Kate runs, she can't escape her feelings or what she did. Kate! Number 5. 
Damon and Elena, The Vampire Diaries. This is even more pitiful than I thought. And there's still hope. The relationship between Damon and Elena slowly transitions throughout the earlier seasons of The Vampire Diaries. Getting off on the wrong foot, they later evolve into allies and friends. Then, by the end of season two, Delena officially becomes a thing. I deserve to die. <sighs> Suffering from a werewolf bite, Damon finds himself lying on what could be his deathbed. Elena looks after him, forgiving the dying vampire for everything he's done in the past. I'm so sorry. I've done so many things, Terry. It's okay. I forgive you. Cuddled up together, Damon declares his love for Elena, and the two engage in a bittersweet kiss. Catherine then shows up with a cure for Damon, but she kind of spoils the moment. Well, it's me you should be thanking. I mean, I'm the one who brought the cure. Number four, Blair and Chuck, Gossip Girl. What happens if Victrola stays at Victrola? If you weren't obsessed with Gossip Girl already, this smooch sealed the deal. Shortly after breaking up with Nate, Blair quickly finds a rebound guy in Chuck. You know, I got moves. Really? Then why don't you get up there? No, I'm just saying, I have moves. These two start to see each other in a different light at a burlesque club one evening. Shedding some clothing, Blair shows Chuck that she's not that innocent. Blair decides to continue her bad girl streak as the night continues, making a move on Chuck in the back of a limo. Thanks for the lift home. You were amazing. These wealthy, insanely good-looking teenagers express their mutual attraction for one another with a rousing first kiss. Of course, they do a lot more than just pucker up, if you catch our drift. I want you to know, with everything, I won't let this go. These words are my soul. I'll hold on to this moment, you know. Number 3. Jim and Pam, The Office. Hey, uh, can I talk to you about something? As season two of The Office progresses, Jim and Pam become much more than co-workers. At casino night, Jim can't conceal his emotions any longer and confesses his love for her. I'm in love with you. What? Deep down, Pam knows that she belongs with Jim, but feels obligated to stay with her fiancé. I... I can't. Jim is left crushed, as is the audience. Before letting her go, however, Jim gives the receptionist of his dreams a tender kiss. Listen, Jim. Although Pam previously planted an inebriated peck on Jim's lips at the Dundee Awards, this is the couple's first true kiss, closing out the Emmy-winning season with a pitch-perfect cliffhanger. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, I think I am. Number 2. Lorelai and Luke, Gilmore Girls. Hey, the last one up. No, not the last one. <laughs> Rory Gilmore had her fair share of memorable first kisses over the years, especially when she threw herself at Jess. However, Lorelai and Luke easily had the most meaningful romance on Gilmore Girls. For years, viewers longed to see if their friendship would evolve into something more. All that waiting paid off in this episode, as the two finally shut their mouths and touched lips. What are you doing? Will you just stand still? Seeing Luke and Lorelai together at last, all the audience wants is to stand still and stay in this moment forever. What are you doing? Will you just stand still? Even if the moment is abruptly interrupted, nothing can ruin the beautiful bond these characters share. Ah! Ah! All right, I'll explain later. Ah! Before we get to our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Look, maybe you just need something to take Carolina. Oh, 50 feet in the air. How do you expect me to possibly? Good night, Nick. Good night. You know, I keep, I keep putting myself out there and you keep blowing it. And it's probably a good thing because at this point, there's nothing that you can say or do that's going to surprise me. Except that. 
Chris just wanted me to drop off these receipts. Oh, well, he's not here. He took off. Okay. Number one, Ross and Rachel, friends. Try the bottom one. <laughs> While we'll never forget the kiss that commenced Chandler and Monica's relationship, the road to Ross and Rachel's first kiss was an emotional roller coaster. You had no right to tell me you ever had feelings for me. What? After a whole season of pining after Rachel and even getting a small friendly peck, Ross starts to move on with someone else. You think it's easy for me to see you with Julie? Well, then you should have said something before I met her. I didn't know then. And how come you never said anything to me? B As bad timing would have it, this is when Rachel discovers her feelings for Ross. One drunken phone call later, the cat comes out of the bag. Rach, I got a message from you. <laughs> the will-they-won't-they they tension reaches its climax at Central Perk as they let their frustration out. Ross storms off but returns moments later and Rachel unlocks the door. With the music building up, they lean in for a first kiss unlike any other. Now that's what we call closure. Do you agree with our list? Some things simply speak for themselves. What's your favorite first kiss in TV? The truth we both know. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. Fine, do it. I'm doing it. Fine, then do it.